All right, well, good morning, Navator members and friends. We are so honored to see you all here jumping in on the webinar today. Our topic is the Marketing Field Guide for Travel and Leisure. Uh, this is for distributors expanding or entering into this space. So we are recording this. We'll send out the materials in an email to you afterwards. Um, so make sure to watch for those. If you have to drop off anything early, that's totally fine. So just as I was sharing with the poll here, there's 71% of Americans are expecting to travel this year. So this really is a, a, a unique position, a uniquely positioned industry for growth. And as we're showing with this poll, you guys are in the same boat. Um, most of you are looking like you have reservations or you've got some pretty clear plans that you're, you're ready to go jump into. So just cool to see that um, mirror the statistics that we are finding there too. My name is Stephanie Drago. I have been in this industry for 10 years and working e-commerce and marketing for 20 years. Um, and since we're doing travel, I, I have been to 13 countries and three continents. So that is my little claim to fame. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here with you. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to start a poll to just get a sense of kind of what kinds of customers you guys have. Um, how deep into prospecting, how new into this industry you might be. So we'll post that. And then um, while that's starting, let me introduce the rest of our speakers. So Marnie Slack, you have been with the company for 17 years. And one of the things I love is just like you're, you're sharing here is your own experiences tra with travel, but how much you've worked with distributors on travel as well. So welcome, Marnie. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and thank you to all of you for taking the time out of your day. Um, to spend time with us. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, I love travel. I've been to 48 of the 50 states um, and just excited to share some industry information with you all today. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Uh, so Mark Kral, you are our next speaker. You've been working with Navator for 15 years and you've worked with many small and large travel programs as well. And you're super into outdoors adventures. So I'm really glad to have you here today too, Mark. Welcome. That's right. Thanks, Stephanie. And yeah, you're actually lucky I had a date with the ski hill. Um, <laughs> instead, I'll participate and, and be with all of you today. But again, I'm really, really excited um, to be here and to hopefully be able to share some insight on the prospecting around travel and leisure. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. And, and yes, Minnesota does have ski hills. I won't say mountains, <laughs> but hills. Not mountains, but hills, yeah. <laughs> Good distinction, important distinction. Okay. Um, so at the end of this 30 minutes, folks, you will feel more confident. That is our goal um, to help you with prospecting. It's a $10 billion print industry when we're talking about travel. So really just an important area for you um, in your regions to grow. Today, Marnie will cover the travel sub industry. So you'll learn more about those. Mark will cover prospecting. And then I'll take you through those resources demo. And then one of the interesting things that we just see over and over is that 96% of our workshop attendees, such as yourselves, report that these webinars are making an impact on your business. So we're keeping these really strong for you and really wanna help you grow. So when we're thinking of that, just turn off the cell phones, that can be hard. Um, shut down distractions, use the chat for any questions or comments that you have and really focus on those next uh, prospecting steps. So Marnie, as I pass this over to you, I'm just gonna share here quickly the results of the poll. So it looks like actually 60% um, of the folks here are don't have any customers within the travel sector, um, but we do have uh, about 40% who do and kind of a variety there. So that's pretty cool to see, Marnie. Absolutely, it is, it is great to see. And as I mentioned before, you're just really excited to give you some tips and tricks throughout um, the discussion today. So when you think about travel, what really comes to mind? For me, it's certainly all about the details and the planning, um, two things that I, that I love to do. Um, so we've got to cover, you know, where are we going to go on our trip? Should we fly or should we drive? And for me, flying with a two-year-old um, is not exactly a cakewalk, so we would prefer to drive. Um, we also will be talking about, you know, where are we going to stay and what are we going to do while we're on vacation? And so in today's session, we're going to take a brief look at the travel and leisure space and specifically drill into accommodations, experiences and attractions, and then transportation. And throughout our time, you may see some links posted in our chat. So keep those in mind, but don't worry, because at the end of the discussion today, Stephanie will be covering those and all of the great resources that we have to offer. So with that, let's jump right in. So first, let's take a deeper look at our travel sub-industries and let the facts really speak for themselves. So I wanna challenge you, our distributor partners, to make a connection with these stats 
And then ask yourself, what am I going to do as a result of? So again, 60% of you have not you know, ventured in this space. So um, certainly things to glean from the discussion. So from our research, almost 71% of survey respondents plan to take a domestic vacation in the next six months. Extended weekends are certainly on the rise. So three and four day weekends with families are up almost 70%. Next, more than uh, three and four millennials, so about 78%, would choose to spend their money on a desirable experience versus buying something desirable. And finally, 59% of families are more likely to drive instead of fly, and that's me. <laughs> so what does that mean? We're gonna take a, a deep dive into some ideas. So first, let's discuss accommodations. So the events of the past two years have certainly changed the way people think about travel. It has certainly triggered a whole new sense of adventure for some, while others are really looking to seek out more remote options. So think about it for just a minute. From rental properties to B&Bs to resorts and campgrounds, RV parks, travel businesses are really needing to one, they're being forced to really re-examine their priorities, they're redefining their target markets, and third, they're using their marketing budgets in smarter and more diverse ways. So as a distributor, think about your existing clients and new targets in this space and really the various solutions that make their business happen, okay? So being in the industry, I am constantly noticing print applications. So everything from the name badges that the front desk personnel are wearing to wayfinding signage and floor decals that are directing traffic to the TV channel guide and the note from housekeeping and certainly yep. the memo pad and the pen that are on the desk. Um, because I love camping, I'm noticing things like the campground maps, the mirror hang tags, and just again, various signage throughout a campground. So try taking that print survey for yourself within this accommodation sub industry. Um, as, as we were preparing, I was, I was sharing with this group that I've been working with a distributor partner right now on an RFP for their hospitality client. Um, they have several products, including menus and business cards folders, door hangers, and coupons. And so again, print is just all around us. Well, and did you notice too, like you were mentioning camping and taking that, that sort of print survey? Well, and like one of the things when we were doing the research for this, like I just had the experience of camping is very low cost, very budget, but others had this very like luxurious camping and RVs like you were mentioning. And, and those are two completely different kinds of surveys that you would take, but actually the, the, you know, what you might purchase as far as print or kind of ex expanding your brand experience there could be very similar, um, but you might not look at it when, when you're kind of starting out. Um, what do you think there, Marnie? Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things that I really want to stress here to the group today is that print opportunities certainly come in all shapes and sizes. And so, you know, you yeah. don't have to think about the national conglomerates and going after their business, but more so think about it on a local scale. So think about your local campgrounds yeah. or PNBs within your area or even local entertainment parks. Um, you know, there's, there's so many people who are entering the hospitality space and, and focusing on travel and leisure. You know, think about wineries and attractions. Um, a great place to get started is, is really venturing out into exploring with the Chamber of Commerce or Visitors Bureau and, and identifying who is, who is entering this space and then really targeting those individuals. Yeah. All right. So with that, I want to talk about experiences and attractions next. So today, more and more travelers are really willing to pay for those bucket list adventures and, and the authentic cultural experiences that really make for a once in a lifetime trip. Um, when we were doing research, um, the research suggests that 65% of U.S. traveler respondents have indicated that they want that really authentic experience that's representative of the local culture that they're visiting. And so companies mm -hmm. who are really poised to capitalize on the trend, um, they're marketing their services as much more than just the activity. And they're really focusing on creating that unique and meaningful experience. Um, I, I mentioned that I love travel and, and you know, one thing that, that I remember about a trip that I took to Puerto Vallarta was 
Um, we did an outdoor zipline adventure. And then following, we went to this amazing cultural experience that had you know, food and drinks and, and um, dancing and, and all sorts of, of things to really allow ourselves to be immersed in the culture. And that is one thing that I will never forget about my trip to Puerto Vallarta. So with that, um, travelers, again, really crave those meaningful experiences. And yeah, I think you can see that I, I get really excited about the travel and experiences that I've been on. Um, and so, you know, how can you apply print application in this sub industry? Um, so let's take a, a look at some product ideas. So one, um, some ideas might be to allow water bottle labels and promotional products to tell stories. Uh, put your business on the map by directing with signage or raising awareness through direct mail campaigns. And then again, use postcards and coupons to really inspire and build that loyalty. So as a distributor, the opportunities are out there and it's really up to you to, to you know, identify you know, how much you want to plug in. All right, and last but not least, let's turn our focus over to transportation. So leisure travelers are happy to be on the road again after too much time spent being at home. Um, travel volume is increasing, business travelers are returning, and customer experience is really emerging as that primary challenge of recovery. Customer safety and satisfaction is certainly high on the priority list, and at the same time, loyalty is up for grabs. And so this is really forcing those transportation companies to roll out fresh and creative marketing tactics to really engage and connect in meaningful ways with their customers and prospects. Um, before I leave you today, I, I wanna share a, a quick story of a distributor that I have been working with over the past, of the, uh, the, the past year. And this distributor supports a nationwide rental vehicle uh, customer. And so what really started out as, as program support for their business stationery has really morphed and, and led into so many other opportunities. And so we started talking about signage. And so today we're their supplier for their cube and desk signage for their team members. We've talked about posters and counter signage um, for their rental car desks. We also have produced stickers for vehicle maintenance within their fleet. We have done parking signs and exterior signage for their parking garages. And just being able to work with this distributor one-on-one -on -one and, and really grow our businesses mutually has been so exciting. And, and just, um, we're really excited about where we're headed with for 2022. So with that, um, before I, I turn it over to Mark, you know, certainly opportunities are, are in this space and I'll have him um, take it over and talk about prospecting. All right, thanks Marnie. Great, great information. As you kind of explained, there is print all around. And again, I too love to travel. I often find myself looking at the print, whether you know it's in the lobby of the Whitewater Rafting Company that we booked for the or the hotel we're staying at or the resort. Um, and again, I've actually been caught many times, like you know, being asked, "What are you looking at over there, Mark?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm trying to figure out how they printed this or how they did this piece." And it's like, you know, "There's a waterfall <laughs> over here that's much prettier than that that sign." And I have to check myself and remind myself I'm on vacation. But again, when you're the print geek that I am, um, you know, it's all these different things that we notice when we're when we're traveling and, and just. <laughs> but again, the real adventure really, <laughs> the real adventure does actually start when it comes to the prospecting, right? So you have, um, you, you're not quite sure where to start. And again, hopefully we'll go through this in the next couple of minutes here. And we'll kind of give you some ideas and that sort of a thing. And again, 60% of you that are here today aren't in this industry, right? They're not, you're not playing in this industry yet. So hopefully we can give you kind of some perspective and, and get you there. Um, so, so where do you want to start? Obviously you're going to want to start with your low hanging fruit. Who are your current clients? Look at that list, see how you can continue to build your portfolio with them, upsell, cross sell, offer new ideas, new products, and that sort of a thing as well. And then just outside your client list, they may not be clients yet, but again, just your current network, you know, word of mouth, you know, keeping it up social media, on the news, the newspapers, you know, what's happening in your area? What's happening in the region? Are there any new businesses, you know, that are, that are looking to come to your area that, that kind of fall into this, this vertical? And you want to be obviously the first one to make contact and see if you can help them in any way and advertise the services and, you know, ventures that they're trying to sell and to get out in front of everybody. And then after that, right, so some of the other areas, once you get outside your current book, of, of business that you currently have is going to be looking at your Airbnbs in the area, the VRBOs, which are super, super popular over the last 
because it almost seems like everybody has an extra room they're willing to rent out for the right price. Well, what comes along with that? Advertising, you need to make it hospitable for people to want to be there and that sort of thing. But again, look at your campgrounds, your local travel. Um, you know, when it comes to the, the like what Marty was talking about with transportation, looking at your different ride share shares that might be in your area. Um, your Ubers, your Lyfts, and that sort of thing. Yeah, those are a national brand, but each one of those drivers kind of run their own business and run their own right. way of doing it. So again, they are a very, they're a potential client for you for, for different information that they want to have. Again, your parks, your wineries, um, you know, entertainment centers, your bowling alleys, your visitor guy, our visitor bureaus or visitor yeah. centers, cities have those, right? So you're going to want to, you want to, you know, try to partner with them. And one of the ways that, that navigate can directly help you with, right, instead of just giving you advice, is this outreach kit that we have, right? So it's the outreach kit for distributors and with self-promotion ideas, um, has all kinds of different stats with different verticals and who you should be going after, how you should be going after them, you know, kind of what we're talking about here with prospecting. And it's not just, you know, just information or ideas. We also take it a step further and we actually have templates created, email templates. So we're doing all that hard work of all the guts of your email, you just have to personalize it and find that contact you want to send it to. Of course, wordsmithing is always nice, but again, we have, you know, that we get that first step out of the way for you again. And that's as far as subject lines and that sort of thing. If you're doing an email campaign, right, it needs to be catchy. People are going to want to see that subject line and that's going to draw them to open it and actually see what the content of your email is. So again, we have all of that information on these outreach kits. Um, and then again, of course, you know, in the next area, you're going to want to, you know, partner with your chamber of commerce. And again, like I said, with your visitor bureaus. So again, keep those in mind. They're going to probably be the first two that I probably want to reach out to, to find out what kind of areas are, or what kind of companies are in your area. And so the next step is to define that prospecting list. So now you've went out, you found all the different, the different companies or the different businesses that you want to reach out to. So now you need to actually define that list and who is it that you're going to call, right? Um, how are you going to contact them? Who is the contact? You want to build that out so you have all that information in front of you. Again, Google's a really good tool to use. Your LinkedIn, you know, you can search for some of these companies and attractions, that sort of thing, and get more information, um, you know, from, from there. And again, our outreach kit does touch on that on page 14 and 15, if you have that downloaded, or once you get that downloaded, to take a look at that as well. Um, and... So once you have that list, now, now, that, now you have to actually figure out what kind of campaign that you're going to be decide. Are you going to call them? Are you going to email them? Are you going to text them? Which texting has been a really big way for businesses to start marketing and inform you know, their, their, their clients of what's going on. So again, it's a little bit more challenging, but again, it's a, it's a creative way. And I think it'll get you know, people's attention as well. And another way that Navator can help out is samples, right? We have a plethora of samples that we can send out on your, you know, on your behalf. Um, you know, whether it's the different types of products that we carry, we have nine different vertical market kits that hopefully some of you are familiar with, but which of those kits contain are a multitude of different products that all focus on one vertical. So it could be from a water bottle label to a business card, to a banner, uh, to a memo pad, that sort of a thing. So again, it helps those creative juices and gets you thinking about all the opportunities you have once you have that meeting with your client. Yeah. And then, so one step further is once you're prospecting, and if you want to get more involved in your community, again, joining, not just contacting your chamber of commerce, but actually join them, partner with them, become part of the board, um, you know, with your travel centers or your, you know, maybe partner in coming up with a travel guide, participate in that. Um, and again, another thing that we really like to do or to, to suggest is look at what your current clients are offering and kind of do an audit on all the different print media that they're using. And, and then you can either contact us, one of our sales reps, and we can go through it with you and we can perform an audit as well and say, you know, I think they're missing this, they're missing this, they're missing this. So we want to add these types of products to their offering as well. And again, some of you may look at this and be like, well, look at that. A lot of times with travel, you know, you need to have a map and you need to have really high detailed pictures sort of thing. So you might be a little bit concerned. But again, it's, it's good to remember that there's companies out there like Fiverr.com. This isn't a paid advertisement. We are not mm -hmm. partnering with them, but again, we do like services. But again, there it's, it's a group of, um, it's, a, it's a group of freelance artists that are out there waiting in the wings, um, willing to take on your business and they can help you with the maps and some of those graphics and, and other aspects when it comes to actually designing, you know, if it is a trail guide or a, um, you know, a, a 
the mm -hmm. a final guide that mm -hmm. sort of thing. They can assist with all of those things if if, if design is not in your in your wheelhouse. Well, and I like too, Mark, like some of the examples that we shared down below. It's like there's the map kind of idea. There's walking tours, historical tours. There's kid stuff, family stuff, beer trails. You know, like there's there's food guides, travel. There's so many different ways to do it that even if maybe your community has one of them, you might be able to try a different one. And that's like a whole new area to partner with the local organizations in your area. So there's just a lot of really creative solutions out there for travel and distributors specifically. <laughs> and again, ultimately, you know, what we want to do these companies and the businesses is increase that brand visibility, right? We want their brand everywhere and they should want their brand everywhere to make it more memorable. And again, just to drive that interest and engagement. And one last kind of tip that, you know, I forgot to mention earlier that I'll kind of bring up is the whole idea around sustainability. I think Marnie touched on it briefly, but again, we found out that 83% of travelers um, actually care and they, they want to participate and they want to visit these area or uh, these resorts and these destinations that believe in the sustainable movement and, and making sure that the environment is in, is in the forefront. So again, it may not be that, it, that could be part of your audit, right? You could look at the material that they have and maybe they are a sustainable company, but are they advertising it? Are they pushing that forward to the customer to make sure that they're aware of it? Because it does matter. You know, people will make their choice whether to stay at, you know, resort A or resort B based on, you know, whether or not that they're a sustainable company that, that is supporting the movement. So again, um, keep that in mind and use that during your audit. <clears throat> and again, it's a great way for you to, you know, to kind of bring up, like, hey, it might be time to update all of your materials. So again, it's almost kind of like a rebranding um, that can kind of go in your favor. Um, and we're here to support that for you. So with that, again, thank you all for your time. I'm gonna pass this over to Stephanie now, and she's gonna kind of talk about the brandable marketing um, tools that we offer um, for our distributors. Perfect, perfect, thanks, Mark. So thanks for, um, thanks for those tips. And so this will be the last section that we have today. I'll take you through the tools that really can help, that you can brand to your business. Everything that I'm gonna show you here is free and rebrandable. So I'm just gonna keep underscoring that. You can make these your own. Um, so just a level set, every month we have exclusive releases of content, just like the travel one that we're showing you today. Um, it's coming to Navator members. You can sign up by going to Navator.com at the bottom. Um, and there's a newsletter sign up that looks like this. And you can sign up and get the access to that material. Um, so we do one or two launches a month. So that means over the course of 2022, we are going to have roughly 20 different industries full of content. So today, you know, we're hitting travel, but if you also have customers in the healthcare industry, or you're starting with, um, you're helping startups in your area, there's going to be more materials coming to you that will be in a similar kind of format. And we don't want to do it in a superficial way. Like we're not just giving you an industry and a couple of product recommendations, we're giving you three and four levels deep, and that's really to put you in the driver's seat and make you feel like an expert as you go out and prospect. Um, so the materials that are, are all digital, so again, you can reuse those as much as you want and put thing, putting them on your websites, your social, in your email, nothing says Navator, so it's all yours to use as you'd like. So I'm gonna take you through kind of a demo here then of the content that we provide. So the first thing is the monthly content calendar. And this one here has is going to have even more as we go through the year, but you can see here in February, travel and leisure, healthcare. Um, it also has all the links to the different content that we've provided through the Insider. March, what's coming soon, for the historical archives will be there as well. And all the links are right here. So this is a really important page for you. So I'm going to hit the travel and leisure um, central hub. So this is just um, this is sort of the central location where all the materials are for travel. And so everything that you've seen here today, we've uh, we've shown you is on this page. So the first thing I want to show you is the number one tool for distributors to put in front of your customers. Again, there's no branding um, for uh, Navator. This is all for you. You can use this in multiple forms. This is the field guide itself. It's about 14 pages long and is chock full of the information that Marnie really went through. It's got tips, it's got statistics, it's got product recommendations, and just outstanding imagery that really makes it clear of like, if I look at that, I can see why it's important to have those kinds of materials 
on my experience or on my, you know, my campsite or, you know, wherever it might be. So just really great stuff here. You can use it with the link at the top. The URL is very neutral. Again, not Navator, just printcatalog.net. So you can use that directly. You can download the PDF by clicking this button down here. You can print it. Um, if you download the print the PDF, you can also change colors. I've seen distributors um, make it look more like their company. I've also seen um, distributors make the materials look like the company that they're prospecting to. And again, if you have a graphic designer, you can do those things or you know, services like Fiverr and whatnot can also help do those things. So just really great content there for the field guide. Some of the other materials that we have then is this social media toolkit. And this one is a really great one. You just download it here. Um, and, and this one, here, let me show you this one. Here we go. Um, the social media toolkit is uh, just a PowerPoint and it's a select group of images that you can use on your social pages. I have the instructions right here. You can use one image or all of them. All you do is right click, save as the picture, and put that on your desktop and then slide it over to Facebook or slide it over to LinkedIn, wherever it is that you feel most comfortable. And these are ready for you to do or to, to, to use on your own. You can add your logo on top, your phone number, your contact information. These are really yours to just do as you please. Um, we also have seeded some, con some copy for you. And, and kind of like what Mark was saying is we're just trying to help not start from a blank slate. I think that's the hardest part of you know, any sort of campaign is when you just feel like it's hard to get started. So you can tweak this, make it your own, again, add your content information or just use as is and put this right on social along with those images. So a lot of really good things here or use this in your emails to send that out as well. So lots of good options, lots of good copy there. Um, so then if I go back here, we also have a blog that'll be coming soon every month. We have more and more of these blogs. And again, they're not, they're not short little blurbs that, you know, they're in-depth analysis of these markets and of the tools that are available for you. The last one that I'm going to share with you is the marketing images. And this is a set of 20 to 30 images per industry. Um, and so you can see this load, you can download the full resolution imagery. Some of them are PNG files, which just means that they have a little transparency. So you can mix that in with whatever products that you're featuring. So maybe you're selling apparel at your shop or maybe you know whatever variety of materials you might be bringing forward, you can add this on and just make it all look like one cohesive campaign. There's also the full res imagery um, that you saw in that field guide. So if you wanted a bigger picture of say that vehicle with the, with the magnet sticker on there, then you, know, you can have that access to. Okay, so 20 to 30 images to use on your own um, and however way that works for you. These are some of the tools, the top tools that the distributors have been asking for for us is that more help with their help with their prospecting, help with their social sites and stuff like that. So that's what we're trying to come through for you and deliver. The last one that I'm gonna call out is the research dollop. These research dollops are just huge. They're where we start. It's, it's what kind of goes behind the scenes of everything that you've seen today. This is sort of the in between the lines and the detail behind it. So this one, for example, has the major priorities. So when Marnie and Mark were talking about doing an audit or sort of a print survey, you can actually look through this. Like if these are priorities to the industry and sustainability is what 83% of, of customers are looking for, you're finding that right here. Use this almost as your audit guide. You know, do you, the end customer, have anything related to sustainability? Are you, are you, you know, kind of touting your cancellation policies? Um, are you kind of going through that kind of material though? Um, we also are recommending the top print products for this industry. So instead of thousands of products that can feel a little bit nerve wracking, it's just a handful. And those are the ones that you can really focus on for this industry. My favorite part is probably the stats. Um, this is about the, the industry as a whole um, and if there's growth or not. But then also, what are they doing with print? And so in this case, it's a $10 billion industry and it's number seven in the hottest industries for, uh, for print out of the 25. So that's really huge. And that's, I know that's why you're all here today. The next page then has the research itself. And so you can just read through our sort of Cliff Notes version of it, or you can click into the sources and get more information. So if you're gonna tackle say the, the Airbnbs like Mark was talking about, maybe read some of these in a little bit more detail so you understand the mentality and the market shifts for those Airbnb owners. 
And then the last page here is conversational topics and tips. We'll often, often have like language like say this and not that, or just suggestions that might help you get started. And also some helpful information just generally about print that might be useful in your conversations as well that you can bring up. We have questions to get you started. And in this case, you know, we've, we've, you've said that you're fairly new to, to, to the travel industry. So these questions will be really helpful. Pick the ones that make the most sense for you and for that customer. And then last are those action steps that Mark took you through that are really oriented towards, I am just getting started. What should I do first? Where can I really take that action? Okay, so th those are our launches every month. Um, and one of the things then is just, you know, that you can count on this, that all of these materials are going to come to you every month, whether, you know, whichever industries make the most sense to you. And you can understand, again, that two to three levels deep, putting you in the driver's seat, helping you be the expert. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're, um, what we thought would be kind of fun is do a little bit of a pop quiz here as we start to move into the Q&A section. So I'll kind of give us a pause and I'll launch that survey for you and or that poll for you. And let me kind of get started with some of the questions that we have. So we've gotten a few in the chat. Please add your questions as we go and we'll keep pulling those forward. So the first one is about the travel guides that we were showing. Um, who is typically publishing them? Where do you find if there's any out, out there already? How do you get in front of um, how do you get in front of those? So, um, Marnie, maybe I'll pass it over to you first to, to give an answer. Sure, absolutely. So, with regards to to travel, um, certainly connecting with the, the the local folks within your community. So, again, the visitor bureaus, the the chamber of commerce, um, that's always a, a good place to start for idea generation. And then, um, you know, once you get to that point of of uh, ready for production. Um, Navator is ready to support you in that effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Um, Mark, anything else you'd want to add there? No, I think she covered it. I mean, that's kind of where yeah. you're going to start, right? And that's where you're going to get that information from is, is and then again, Google. Google your, yeah. map, your community in your area and just look for those types of, you know, the hospitality side of things. And that'll give you, you know, all the different Airbnbs and VRBOs or go to those sites and, you know, mm -hmm. you'll be able discover all of that stuff relatively easily. You know, it's kind of just a tip of your fingers. Yeah, and I think one of the other things too that I would add is really relying on your social network. So I've seen people you know, post out on Facebook the, the various boards, um, hey, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. And, and do you know anybody in this industry or do you have any connections here? Um, and so I think we would be surprised that what would show up if we were to be more reliant on our, on our social network. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really... Um, that's a really good point. Yeah. And I know I've seen it too. Like we were saying before, like if you have one kind of a travel guide, that doesn't mean there's no other options because, you know, maybe you have the walking tour, but maybe there's a historical, you know, guide you can do and then get sponsorships from, you know, those neighborhood um, organizations that can be a strong source of sponsorship. Plus the, the businesses in that area too. So there's a lot of different angles to take there. Okay, um, the next question then is, can you explain more um, about, uh, you know, getting the printed materials for vacation rental properties? Um, so is there, you know, how do you, how do you kind of do that? And, and it kind of gets at, like, do we have some tools there or, you know, do we have a question there? Mark, do you want to talk about maybe some of your examples with the websites that we've done for, um, for some of those themes? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, We've had, you know, I've worked directly with a couple of distributors that have taken this step further, right? They've actually identified and they had an Airbnb or VRBO, I believe, that they were working with. And what they want to do is kind of procure a list of products that a guest may want into to kind of take back as kind of like a, like, a, like a deck of cards that has a picture of the sunset outside the deck of, you know, of, of this, this place that they're staying at or they can upload their own photo that, you know, kind of make that memory and kind of take that trip home with them. Um, yeah. Anything from memo pads sitting next to the beds, you know, it's for you to take notes that are branded with, with that, with, with that, with that business or that company, you know, so there's a lot of different avenues or a lot of different ways that you can kind of take this in, in a lot of different directions you can go. But again, mm -hmm. we've built that website that would allow their customers to go ahead and upload artwork or and to purchase those products and to procure those products as well. So again, that's another service that we have 
um, on from the Navator side that we can assist with as well is, is, is building out those sites that allow, you know, for ordering those different types of products. Yeah, it kind of gives some new prospecting opportunities when you do that and kind of set it up as a, as a standard, you know? Right. You know, these are your standard tools that you're going to need for your, you know, Airbnb or whatever it might be. I think that's, that makes people feel like, okay, I get that. You know, I can cover that. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, we've got a question out there from Bill that says, is the 2022 version of a um, Fresh Things of All Link, All Things Print flip book that came out last year, is there a 22 version of a Fresh Look of All Things Print? I think we're talking about the highlights. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, is that, isn't that what it is? I'm blurring out. Yeah. So it's the yeah, thanks. Fresh Look at All, <laughs> yeah. Top high product highlights. Sorry. It's blurred. <laughs> <laughs> this booklet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was a sort of a mini version of the catalog and just highlighted some of the, the big innovations that came out. Uh, and so uh, in this year, we did the whole catalog, um, Bill. So that is out there. Um, Vicki, maybe you can add the link to the 2022 catalog um, that we just came out with. So we are definitely very excited to just be launching with that um, just about I don't know, 45 days ago, really. <laughs> Good question. All right, let me share the results of um, our pop quiz here. So uh, the top priorities for travel, um, you know, the, the ones that you guys are calling out really reflect the, so I think you're listening, it reflects the research there. So ability to cancel or change your reservations, health and safety is a priority, um, supporting local, and then the, the fourth one there is the location is well suited for me to work remotely. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. that's important. Marnie? Yeah, Marnie. Stephanie, absolutely. And I, and I can talk a, a, a little bit about the health and safety as a priority. So I've been working yeah. with distributors who have um, have asked for safety seals. Um, safety seals come in in a variety of different shapes and sizes. And, you know, think about um, you go into the hotel room and it's got the seal on the door that says your room has been sanitized and cleaned. Um, mm -hmm. Again, back to vehicles. If you're, if you're a vehicle, you know, working with car dealerships, hey, we've sanitized your car after we did maintenance or um, even uh, restaurants and to-go meals. Um, so again, safety seals are, are uh, absolutely out there and, and really align well with the health and safety priority. Yeah, I agree. Okay, all right, thank you, Marnie. Um, so then the next question, uh, we didn't talk about this a ton, but um, this is kind of interesting. So how popular are QR codes in this industry? Um, does the customer need to provide artwork for the code? How does that get created? Do you guys wanna tackle that or do you want me to take that, tackle that one? Yeah, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll certainly start. So QR codes are, are, are absolutely uh, prevalent in, in even the travel industry. Um, I saw it when I was traveling to Florida this, this past uh, holiday and uh, QR codes are everywhere. You, I, again, they don't, as you're going to, let's say an attraction, um, it's here's a, a standing sign and snap the QR code if you want the park map. Um, so yeah, they're, they're absolutely out there. Um, and, and if you need one, there are websites that you can uh, generate a, a QR code. It, it's, you know, there, yeah. there doesn't need to be any sort of fancy design, if you will. Um, but yeah, from my experience, they're there. Yes, definitely. And as far as finding them free online, if you just Google, you know, QR code generator, free mm -hmm. QR code generator, then you'll get those two tools and it's super simple. All you need is the destination link, you know, whatever URL you want people to go to. So yeah, I think, uh, I think we're all seeing QR codes get a lot more popular. Mm -hmm. for that in the moment, I just was thinking like, Marnie, if you had to make reservations for a road you were going to go down, how mm -hmm. would you ever found that? Yet mm -hmm. if sign there or you know somehow your experience brochure or handout or whatever it might be has that on there then suddenly you're you're you know have better information at your fingertips too that helps helps mm -hmm. those facilities and locations kind of organize themselves to reach demand right exactly yeah absolutely and and my husband and I were dining at a local restaurant uh over the weekend and it, we didn't get menus we had it was here's the the QR code scan it and and sit at the table and and look at the menu on your phone yeah, 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 that's true. Okay, um, so we had a couple of questions about recordings and sending out the links. Um, and I know Vicki has been sending, putting links in the chat there too. So if you want to get the monthly content calendar, sign up for the newsletter at the bottom of navator.com. So that's just at the bottom there. And then you can do that. Um, you don't have to be a member to get the newsletter. So um, hot tip there. 
<laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yes, you can get access to all of that good information. Um, and then, yes, this is being recorded and we will publish the content and everything. You'll get an email in the next 24 hours for that. All right, um, another question that I got is around the supply chain. Um, so obviously this is a daily part of our conversations. Um, is there anything that I should be doing differently? Um, you know, how do you minimize delays? Are there delays? Um, so Marnie, you wanna hit that one first and then Mark? Absolutely. So we're, we're not, uh, supply chain challenges are everywhere and, and our teams are, are communicating with distributors and, and what we're doing on our end is, you know, we're buying where it makes sense. We're, we're bulk buying. We're encouraging dig distributors to place their orders early. Um, so I work with a, a, our forms manufacturing division and, and we have people placing reorder after reorder and, and reorders are out several months because the paper is is such a, a, a tight commodity. And so, um, yeah, uh, they're everywhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mark, you have anything from your perspective there? that you're seeing? You know, I think that, I mean, you kind of covered it, plan ahead. I know that's not always, always easy to do. A lot of the jobs that we all receive are rushes and they're last minute, we need it yesterday, that sort of a thing. Just unfortunately, during these times, it's going to make everybody's life really difficult if that's the kind of work that it, that continues to come in. Again, Navator itself, we're doing all that we can to make sure that we have the supplies and the materials ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. But again, they're, they're with the challenges. So again, if you can plan ahead, um, order ahead of time, um, that, that's going to be your best friend at, at this point right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I would um, refer to when Stephanie is showing you on the screen is we've put together some great industry information around the supply chain challenges. And I think that this piece can certainly be used as a communication guide when you're talking to your customers about um, the, the, the challenges that they're facing and, and why is this happening. So um, Vicki can certainly post the, the link to this information in the chat as well. And we do, you know, this piece is really um, helpful to understanding sort of what's going on behind the scenes of why I can't get my order. And, um, and you know, we do have tons of inventory, like we are keeping up with orders, but I know there can be some scenarios where it's just not going to work. And we work with folks to figure out options and, and figure out what flexibility there might be. And we're also like trying to call out like areas of volatility and so that there are different options here. So, you know, this we published uh, just like two weeks ago, but you know, if you're, if you're seeing all of a sudden then, you know, tomorrow lamination stocks are really doing just fine, then mm -hmm. But like then you can, but it's flip flopping a lot on us. And so if we're recommending, you know, try washable stocks instead or try uh, enhanced finishes instead of getting the thicker, uh, you know, or kind of more exclusive or custom kinds of stocks, it, you know, just flip the <laughs> flip the recommendations to the opposite one because it does change pretty quickly. Um, and we're definitely keeping up with it and making sure that, you know, we can deliver what the products that you need. And I think the one of the last things that I would stress here is, is certainly flexibility um, yeah. and, and, and utilizing house stocks when you can, because that's where we're getting um, the support from the mill. They're, they're running the all day, every day stacks, but then the, the specialty stacks, they've just said, hey, we're going to hold off on producing that until the demand is there. Um, yeah. So again, flexibility is key. And, you know, we're happy to send out samples. Uh, I did this earlier this week with a distributor partner. They're, um, you know, weighing one stack over the other. And I said, hey, we can drop samples in the mail. You can't really tell the difference. And, and hopefully they'll go with our house in-house option. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have um, someone who just commented, Kent was just sharing a 10,000 brochure order. It was supposed to be on a hundred pound gloss cover and, and it, it just couldn't be found. So had to move to 80 pound cover, which wasn't what the client wanted, but that kind of flexibility is exactly what Marnie's talking about. And, and some, you know, sometimes you can get a, a lesser amount of the stock. So maybe you want, you know, getting 3000 brochures is a good sort of stop gap until mm -hmm. stock comes in and we can do it that way. So there's a lot of options there. And that's like really important to talk with, you know, your print coaches at Navator um, and if you don't know who that is, you know, email us in um, at the customer service address and we'll let you know who that is. And we can advise on more options for you because if you can warn people in advance, hey, if you have a big order that you always put in one, 
talk to us about, you know, like, um, of, you know, what that might look like this year, because it's going to be a little different. So, um, yeah, so lots of different options there. Um, okay, I think that is the last of our questions. I think, did I miss anything, Vicki? I think I got them all. Um, so um, thank you very much, you guys. Really appreciate your time today and, and all the attention you guys as speakers brought to this too. We really appreciate that. Um, and you know, we have a survey that'll pop up when we're done when we close out the webinar. So please fill that out because that really helps us um, produce solid webinars for you that can give you the information you need to be in that driver's seat. So um, visit navitor.com. You can get more free tools and everything out there. So really appreciate your time today. Um, and that you know, here at Navitor, we innovate, uh, you sell, and we both win together. And we're just so glad to see you today. Have a really good uh, time uh, serving the travel industry. I think it'll be exciting to see some of the results coming in. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, all. Bye.